So obviously Rafa comes in, um, Carlo's out, but there's been some some strange, shall we say, from like a fan's point of view, it's been like some quite strange business done by Everton, quite low value fees being paid around, but what have you made to the transfer business so far, um, Baz? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously, since we were taken over in 2016, you know, we've had money put into us by Farad Mashir. We've spent a lot of money, uh, haven't used it well. You know, I don't think anyone can get away with it. We've had some success and we've had some failures. And I think what the owner tried to do was probably run before we could walk. Uh, and it, we haven't we haven't spent the money wisely. And so when you're doing that and you're not getting the rewards, you were care losses, which is what Everton have had over the last few years. And this summer, it's kind of come home to roost. Obviously, we've got something like the fourth richest owner in Europe or, or whatever it is. You know, he's worth built not not so much far as but Alisher Usmanov, who has close links with Everton. But the way the, the the rules are, they can't spend your own money. So um even though you know we've got an owner saying, Well, I want to put another 200 million into players, the Premier League rules don't allow it. So Everton have kind of got to a situation now where we need to we need to just get our books in order, and this is the summer we've had to do it. So I think the club have decided it's that it's a, a kind of one out, one in kind of policy to get round, or you know, to ensure that we don't breach finance. It's not financial fair play; it's the profit and sustainability rules in the Premier League. So we are where we are. You know, we got Andros Townsend, who's a Premier League player, on uh, a free transfer. Didn't exactly get the pulses right, you know, racing. We've got um, Damari Gray for one and a half million, who's a player who's got loads of potential but hasn't really done it. And Ashmir Begovic was a free as well. So, yeah, we've spent one and a half million, which is a, a sea change for the last five years. But it is what it is, mate. It's about trying to get the books in order, you know, trying to stop paying players too much money and pull that wage bill down. So it's been frustrating because we need a right back, but it is what it is. That's it. I mean, obviously, recent windows, I mean, Everton have obviously had quite a lot. And I'm not saying in terms of getting value for money, they haven't really mm. done that, have they? I mean, as far as, am I, am I right in saying that Everton, in terms of your recruitment strategy, the actual manager isn't really making the signs, not the director of football above it, a little bit like what Leeds have got? We have got a director of football, yeah. We've had Marcel Brands and, and yeah. he's just signed he's been here for three years and he's signed another three year deal. And we had Steve Walsh from Leicester before him. Uh and there's a lot of there's a lot of conjecture around Everton and, and certainly from our fan base of that who exactly is buying the players because yeah. we've got a very enthusiastic owner that likes the look of certain players and wants them and, and it hasn't always fitted in with what we believe the strategy should be or could be. Um, so it's been a bit muddled. I don't think there's any question about that. It's been a bit muddled. And what do you do with that? Well, you've got, you know, you've got too many cooks spoiling the broth. How, how do you actually get hold of that? So hopefully this is the reset. Um, and we've we've changed managers. You know, we went from having David Moyes for eleven seasons, mm. you know, Roberto Martinez for for three years, to having five managers in five years, which just is very uneverton like. So, but that I guess that's what comes with having a, a takeover with a rich billionaire, and he wants success. And if it doesn't come, he, he moves managers on very quickly. So with that, you can't create any kind of stability, and that's what we've seen basically. That's it, isn't it? I mean, you know, you had those 11 years with David Boys and you were always consistently, you know, consistently, not quite, I know you got that one season when you got the top four, but you were always in and around it. You are always contenders for it. And look, I know obviously if you weren't bringing in the money that um, the, the big four at the time and that lot, but still, I think it's probably easy to attract players, you know, not having to mm. pay big premiums just to get players to, turn, to get to walk through the door. And I think obviously since Moyes has left from an outside game, that's definitely kind of been the case. You know, you don't associate it with Everton, obviously. I mean, even going into this game, to be honest with you, mate, I mean, obviously we played you both times last season. We won at your place. You beat us. And to be honest, that first five minutes Everton produced was 
wow, we, 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 we could not get a kick in that game for the first 45 minutes. But then at Goodison Park, I felt that was one of our best away for. I think mean, both teams mm. are actually a little bit um, inconsistent from time to time in terms of performances. But obviously, you get that win the first game. I mean, obviously, it doesn't start well. So I'm going to down at half time. Was the crowd starting to maybe maybe a little bit, or you know, because of the fact Raph is there, it's not been a great first half performance. Was the crowd a little bit on edge in that first half, maybe? Uh, not for the first 20 minutes because we were in absolute control and then we, we go and make a stupid error and you're 1-0 down and then obviously you do get a few discerning voices, of course you do, but I thought they, I thought they stuck with the team really till half-time. There's a few boos at half-time, but you know, it's what, listen, it's what you'd expect at times. Um, but then the second half, the, the, the crowd were there right from the way go and the, the team were fantastic in the second half. The manager made a tactical change Went to four four two or four four one one, pushed the Charles in more central, and then Southampton couldn't live with us really in the second half, and it it probably should have ended up four or five one at the end of the day. But you know that's that's what it is, isn't it? Day one, you know, can throw up all kinds, and we'll just have to see what happens going forward. But it, it was a it was a positive start for for seventy minutes. Uh, the other twenty, I think, you know, Southampton were probably the better side for the latter part of the first half but you know other than that second half especially Everton with, with the dominant side so a good result in the end It's interesting you mentioned you went to like a 4-4-2-4-4-1-1 because normally with Marcelo Bielsa we kind of adapt to the other team so if you play two strikers we'll very likely go for back three I'm, I'm assuming you I mean I was just looking like you started my like blood you kind of had a full Two, three, one on the go at the start yeah. of the game, and then kind of shifted it. I mean, would you expect to maybe considering how good you were second half to start this game in the four four two, possibly with Charlton and Calvert Lewin up top? Uh, it's it's really difficult to say to be honest with you because I think Leeds are such a difficult team to plan for because they're just mental. They're all over the place. They run, they they battle for every ball. Uh, it's it, they are a difficult side to play against. So. I think what the manager will do is he'll have his game plan. It wouldn't surprise me if we started with a 4-2-3-1. Um, there's some suggestion he may go 4-3-3, but more like a 4-5-1 for the first half and put Jean-Philippe Gabamon in there. Um, but Rafa Benitez does, or has certainly for pre-season, and it's how he started the game, go with a 4-2-3-1. Um, and maybe try to get... Yeah, we started with Damari Gray in the 10 last week and... It didn't really work in the first half and he was much, much better when he went out to the left wing. But I don't know. I think it wouldn't surprise me if he tried to throw an extra man in midfield to try to cope a little bit with what Leeds do and try to, to break the game up a little bit. Because the thing about it is, and certainly for the two games last season, they were like basketball games against yes. you know Leeds. And I watched, I watched Leeds and was hugely impressed with them last season. They, they do like a basketball game. And I think what we... What we are better doing is kind of what we did at Ellen Road, which was sit in and just make make almost like a low block, but play on the counter attack, try and nick the ball and break on you. And I think this season we've got a bit of pace now in the front four. If he does go with the same four two three one, and it's Gray, Towns, and uh, Richarlison, Calvert Lewin, they've got enough pace to cause Leeds problem if we can spring you on a on a counter attack. But I think if we trap pushing up the way you press the ball and break if we leave gaps in behind you know we could be in real trouble so I think he might just try to start in a bit of a low block and maybe get through the first 20-25 minutes because I'm imagining the atmosphere at Ellen Road's going to be electric so we've got to try to get through that first 20 minutes Well that's what I'm kind of expecting off Rafa to be honest mate I think first 20 minutes as you said I think the crap the crap for it I mean obviously it's going to Allison never telling you there. We, I mean, we've not seen it at Ellen Road, obviously, being in the Championship, particularly good mm. away attendances, really. You know, we don't tend to see like full capacities taken. I mean, and look at from near Everton, so um, near Liverpool, sorry. So, you know, I'm aware that how, how many fans you will take, you well supported away from home, it'd be a gra- cracking atmosphere. Um, and you're just thinking from that, thinking Raf is almost going to try and spoil the party, a little bit like. Look, Raph has never been someone who used to kind of say plays brilliant football, but he gets the job done. Mm. One of the managers where 
if he's, I'm kind of expecting him to play for the one nil kind of thing, not to be sound like horrible or anything. I'm not having a go at that. No, I'm not. expecting Rafa to try and spoil the party a little bit. But that's a sensible thing to do. I, I'm not convinced we've got we've got the um, facilities for that. I'm not really convinced we've got the you know the the players to have a game of basketball. We didn't go well. We're gonna we're wide open, so let's have a go, you know, and see what happens because Leeds can you know can can be very very dangerous if you play that game. Uh, what a day! I seen the first half of of the United game at the weekend and. It's a very open still, obviously attacking and exciting going forward, but do leave gaps. So I think if Everton do do try to sit in and it you're on the break, it could cause Leeds issues. And um we have to be very wary of the threat that you carry. So yeah, I've got no issue with them coming and trying to sit in and say, Well, all right, break us down then and see what we got how we go from there. I think it'll be it'll be very, very interesting just to see how it's approached. Um, but for me, a big the first 20 is going to be huge. We go a goal down in our opening 20 with your crowd. It's going to be a long way back. But if we can maybe quieten the crowd down a little bit and, and take the sting out of the game and play it at our pace, then you know I'm confident we can get something out of the game. But it's going to be a, a hugely difficult game. There's no question about that. Yeah, I mean, the, the force of Richarlison and Calvert Lewin up top is quite scary from Lee's point of view. Uh, if we do go to a back three, that is. That is pretty frightening, and um, to be honest with you, I mean, as, as front two strike partnerships, attacking forces go, you, you're probably not getting much better than that outside of the top six or so. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's obviously something. I mean, the Charles and Calvert Lewin had super against Ellen Road. I thought we could, did a pretty decent job on them at Goodison. Um, yeah, yeah. I think only Calvert Lewin really only had one real chance in that game. But, I mean, obviously, those two are key players. We, we know how important they are, but is there anyone else maybe? Who was Leeds fans would know a little bit less about. Maybe I suppose you're more underrated to who would cause us problems on Saturday afternoon. Uh, who you'll know less about? No, because I think you'll know our main threats. I mean, we've got what one little change with Benitez made at the weekend was pushing the core on more like he was at Watford. You will you'll have seen obviously at the line the core. You'll know him yeah, from his Watford time. Uh, he pushed, yeah, he pushed forward a bit more at the weekend. Scored a great goal. Uh, Luca Dean, our left back, always causes issues. I mean, he had an assist at Ellen Road last season with the uh, with the cross for uh, our first goal down there. So, you know, they're the they're the main threats, I would say. And and I was very, like I said, I was very impressed with the Mari Gray last week when he pushed wide. You know, he's quite quick, got good feet. So I think I, I don't think we'll have anyone on the pitch who's going to surprise you, but it's knowing about a threat and being able to stop it. And I guess that's what we've got with your your men. You know, Rafina, fabulous season last season, great football, a lovely left foot on him. We know about his threats. Can we stop it? Patrick Bamford, who was tremendous last season, you know, really good centre forward. We know about him. Can we stop it? It's it's that issue, isn't it? And I imagine Calvin Phillips will come back in and he was fabulous at Goodison Park last season. So he's another one we know about. But it's again, it's can we negate that threat? Um and Jack. Harrison, who I think is a great player. I've followed him since he was at New York City in MLS as well, who's a really hard-working lad as well. So I think both teams will know enough about each other. And it's who can stop the threat on either side. I guess that that will that will be where the game is key. That's it. I, I thought both games were really good games last time. I mean, especially, obviously, from our point of view, the Goodness and Park one was good, but it wasn't a 1-0 game. That was more 4-2, 4 3 no. In the end, yeah, the yeah. chances that run both teams. I mean, Melier made some unbelievable saves for us. Pickford made some unbelievable saves for you. And ultimately, mm-hmm. it was that Rafinha moment of quality that um, it was the fact yeah. in that game. Obviously, when you guys came to our place, you did a job on us, to be fair. You obviously sat mm-hmm. in, as you said, but, and you got that early goal with the early two goals in that game. But um, I was just looking a little bit more on the season in general. I mean, look, we know it's, it's got off to a nightmare start for us. We find ourselves bottom of the table. I mean, what would your kind of from outside looking in? What was your expectation of Leeds this season? Where would you expect to be finishing at this moment in time? Um, I, I don't. To be honest, I don't think Saturday really changes anything for me. You know, Manchester United are a, a great side, and I know you huge rivals of yours, so you don't like you know hearing that. But they are a, they are a top side. They're going to be up there again. You know, chasing Manchester City. I think. 
them and Chelsea actually will be City's biggest threat. Um, so that's not really changed anything from a Leeds perspective. I think for me, Leeds are in where I put Everton, anywhere between sixth and twelfth. I think there's a there's a bunch of teams for me: Arsenal, Tottenham, Everton, Aston Villa, West Ham, Leeds uh, are all in that are all in that hunt for those you know Europa League conference and then down to twelfth. So. I would put Leeds very much in that bracket. The interesting thing for me will be now teams kind of know more about Leeds, what to expect. Can can they negate the threat? Um, will he play differently? You know, how the Leeds, you know, how can Leeds respond to that? The crowd, obviously, at Ellen Road will make a huge difference. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see whether teams, it's one thing knowing a threat, it's another whether you can stop it. You know, yeah. and, and that's what Leeds have done brilliantly. But I, I would put Leeds in that bracket with us. I really would. I'd put an Aston Villa and West Ham and Arsenal, Tottenham. Those teams, for me, are all fighting. I think you've got the top four, which I think would be nailed on, um, which was last year's top four. I think Leicester are probably the best of the rest at the moment. And yeah. you'd, you'd have to think that they'll probably continue in the vein they're going in. But then the next six places, for me, are up for grabs with anyone. I don't think there's any favourites in there. I think... I feel Everton underperformed last season. You know, we had two home wins from Christmas, which is, we normally win 14 home games. So to have two home wins from Christmas was diabolical for me. Um, so I think Everton are in there. I think Spurs are interesting. If Kane goes, can they replace his goals? So the one thing Leeds have got is they're really settled side. They know what they're doing. They've got a good manager. They've got the crowd now back at Ellen Road. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how Leeds do. And apart from Manchester City, I think Leeds were the best team I saw at Goodison last season in terms of the way they played the game and the effort they put in and every man fight, fighting for the course. So they will certainly be in the hunt for a European place along with, like I said, half a dozen teams, in my opinion, looking from the outside looking in anyway. Flying it. I tell you what, Baz, you, you're a lot more enthusiastic than, than us at this moment in time to say in Europe, but we'll say, look, the thing is, mate, I know... We might still, fi we might still finish 12th. You like us? I'm just saying, there's an opportunity there for Leeds. Absolutely, there is. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. To be fair, mate. Um, but obviously the last season, you felt it was a performance for Everton, and, and look, tenth. That's you know, Everton I was association be pushing for sixth, seventh at least, really, as a, as a minimum. Mm. I mean, what's kind of the target? I mean, obviously, I always look at Everton and think. Should be looking at them cups. You should be looking at them cups, Everton, in terms of if you go full strength, you know, the rest of the top four, five, six, they don't really take it as seriously in that sense. That's, mm. that's just my, you know, the way I look at it. And um, I know obviously with the boys, you, you finish quite close, and the Martinez, I think you got close as well. But um, mm. I mean, it just don't seem to be kicking in that kind of regard. But what, what's the actual target then for Rafa? This is, what, what does Rafa have to do? Probably a better question is what does Rafa have to do? This season to win over all the fans or ninety-five percent of them. Probably win a trophy, really, to win to to mm. turn ninety-five percent of people onto Raf and you know onto supporting them, end the drought. And it'd be quite ironic if it was a, an ex Liverpool manager that ended the trophy drought. But I think really, realistically, um Everton going for Europe, I think you're absolutely right. I think with the investment we've had and with some of the players we've got, we should be certainly pushing for Europe most seasons. I think last year, the reason why I say we underperformed is we were fourth in March uh, and we only had to win four more games, maybe, out of about 10 to get into Europe. And I think we won two or three. So we finished the season really poorly. Um, so, the, the, you know, we got to cut two quarterfinals last season, and we got Manchester United in one, and Manchester City in the other. So that's been the that's been the, the issue with us, and we just didn't have enough quality um, in either game, really. I mean, in City in the FA Cup, we were missing Pickford, and we were missing a couple of other players. United, uh, we were missing players at, in the quarterfinal at home, so we didn't quite have the the the. Quality, I would say, yet yeah, to get past those teams. Had those games taken place at Goodison Park with a full crowd, then that changes things a little bit. It levels it up slightly. Um, so for Everton, just see where we go in the Cups. But you're right, we should be aiming for that because you're absolutely spot on. Those top clubs don't always take 
it seriously. But me saying that, Man City have won four League Cups on the run, I think. And I think the top four have, have contested the FA Cup final for three or four years as well. So those, those clubs are realising that there's actually only three trophies we can win. So to win a League Cup means something and to win an FA Cup means something. So I think we have moved past a period where the top four kind of went, not really bothered about that. It's more Europe and getting in the Champions League. But now they're kind of realising, let's grab a trophy as well. So it, it puts a bit of a cherry on. So it is difficult for teams like Leeds and Everton and maybe Aston Villa and West Ham to win a trophy. We've seen Spurs get to the League Cup final last season. And I think they had two attempts at goal and City had 24 yeah. or something. Things like that where, you know, and Tottenham would consider themselves in the top six and going for the top four. And it was a, a golfing class between them and Man City on the day. And I think we've seen that quite a few times over the last few years. So it's become a more difficult to win a trophy. So that's why I would, if I was Rafa Benitez, I'd be targeting even the Conference League and hoping one of those top four clubs won the other two cups so it drops to seven. I think that's a realistic target. OK. Back onto this game. Last, obviously, thoughts on this game. I mean, obviously, in the push you for a prediction there, Baz, I mean, what are you going for? Leeds versus Everton, three o'clock on Saturday. Full crowd element. What are you going for, mate? Uh, three and eleven. No, no, no. Um, I think I'm gonna go for. I, honestly, I think it'll be two two. I think it'll be a good open game. Uh, I think Leeds will be strong, but I feel just now. I think it. It's one of those where. It, I know it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but it could be a great time to play Leeds. It could be the worst time to play Leeds. Uh, and what I mean by that is first home game. Is the emotion and all of that brilliant? And if Everton can survive the first 20 minutes and get in front, the doubts might just be there at the minute. Whereas if we had you in October and you're on a roll, we could be steamrolled. But I think Everton will get opportunities on Saturday, the same as I think Leeds will. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go probably for a, a very neutral 2-2 draw because I think there will be goals in this game from both sides. So and I'd be delighted with that, I'll be honest. Okay, okay. Well, um, it's been an absolute pleasure having us on, on the channel anyway. Um, yeah, well, best of luck for the season, mate, because, again, we're both outside the Super League club, so it'd be good to see, you know, one of us upset, upset, finishing that top six. You know, it's what I want to see. It's what I want to see. If it, if it can't be us, hopefully it's you guys or West Ham, you know, just be good to see us upset the apple a little bit. But, um, my Thanks for coming on. Make sure you check it out. Toffee TV. The link is in the description down below. And Chris um, CK was on the channel um, for Toffee TV yesterday with a um, opposition preview as well. So uh, absolute pleasure. And we will leave it there. See you later, guys.